Hey all, here at OS Reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at the Dragon Touch Classic 15. This is a gigantic 15-inch digital photo frame that's also cloud-enabled, so it connects to the internet using Wi-Fi. You can send photos over using the cloud and share them, and it has a full HD 1080p resolution. Of course, digital photo frames have been around for a while now, but over the past year or two, we've started to see more of them being connected using Wi-Fi and technically running on a watered-down version of Android OS, which has been pretty neat to see. But this one here has the distinction of being the largest one I've seen yet, it also has about 16 gigs of built-in local storage, although you can always supplement that by using an SD card or a thumb drive. So it is a 15.6 inch touchscreen display, and it's priced at around $200, which is okay, I think, for something that has such a large panel that you're paying for. Inside we have a remote control that you can use to go through the various photos. We've got even a mounting bracket that you can use to hang it onto a VESA mount feet for this photo frame. It's pretty unconventional in terms of the shape, but basically you attach this onto the back and screw it in, and this can kind of pop itself up at an angle. Finally, the charging adapter is using a proprietary round plug, though there is also a mini USB cable that you get for transferring files over via a computer. Body is constructed out of a plastic material, and from the sides it does look relatively slim. The back here features the aforementioned kind of mounting brackets for the VESA. There's also a dedicated power key. There are stereo speakers built on in as well, so you can play back sound with your photos, as well as play back videos as well. And then on the side here, we have all of the ports, and they correspond to a full-sized SD card reader, 3.5mm headphone jack if you want to connect to better sounding speakers, USB thumb drive slot, as well as mini USB for reading data with a computer, and the DC input for power. There is no built and battery on this model, so just something to quickly keep in mind, but like most photo frames in that regard. And here's what it looks like if I kind of attach the mount here on the side, and you can just screw it into place, it will just be able to stand upright like that. Alright, so the display here is turning on for the first time. It might take a few seconds to boot up, and it tells us the directions also printed here. We can set it up using our app. So immediately we can see connect to our Wi-Fi network. We can choose the corresponding network and uh, type in the password. You can see the Google keyboard just pop along on the screen here. Uh, there are a few things I will say here as first impressions though, is of course because it's a touch screen, it is a glossy screen since there's a glass on top, which means it can be a bit more glare prone compared to a matte display if it was non-touch. And also this is a IPS panel, so viewing angles are, of course should be pretty good. We'll see that later on in this video, but it does have a slight gap between the glass and the screen underneath. In other words, it's not a fully laminated display. Maybe it has something to do with the cost as well as the fact that they chose such a gigantic screen. Afterwards, there's a quick setup that tells us how to bind it with our application, what the ID for the photo frame is that we can then use to select it to share photos over to it, and this should be pretty similar to other smart photo frames that we've seen in the past. In fact, you can even share photos by email. That's a new one I've never seen before. So anyone including family members and friends anywhere in the world are able to send photos over to your frame if you give them your kind of ID, which is pretty neat. They don't even need to download a companion application. The app, which is called Our Photo, is pretty simple, and the UI really matches the style that the photo frame also has. And under settings, you can connect to different photo frames, entering the device ID, as well as setting up a name that you want to be displayed as, in our case, OS Reviews, where we can see that this is the device that has access to our photos. We can also revoke access if we want to prevent this particular device or person from sending photos in the future. And under settings, we can also control other things like Wi-Fi, as well as photo settings, such as how fast we want the slideshow to go. Although the version isn't really important, since we're not going to be using it to really uh, do too much uh, in terms of using it for other streaming applications or installing things, but if we do pull up this little tab and control things like the volume, it kind of gives away that it is running on Android underneath, whether it's Android 6 or Android 8, I'm not completely sure here, but again, you can control things like the music, and it is using that standard drag down drawer. So there's always this floating little dot that you can drag around, kind of like assistive touch, that brings up some additional controls. So under first grid here, we have access to some of the photos that we can tap on to just have a full screen view, and in here we can see all of the images that we've sent over to the frame. Tap on any of these images 
to begin a full screen view. Touchscreen here does support gestures like pinch to zoom and multi-touch, so we can pinch in to view a bit more details. Although one thing I will say is if you're sharing photos through their cloud service, it does slightly compress the quality of the images. It might not be full resolution, especially since the images are getting blown up across such a large display, it might be a little bit easier to spot some fuzziness if you aren't uh, looking at the most crisp of images. However, if you're loading back images directly on the device's memory, that can sometimes get you a higher resolution image. But if you're not zooming in, everything still looks very clean, very sharp. Otherwise, it does work very nicely in terms of interacting with photos with such a giant canvas. It really is quite eye-catching and fun to look at. Overall, again, a great experience as you're looking at images. Sometimes it might be a little bit cut off in terms of the aspect ratio or the photo not being this large, but we just have kind of a grayed out area that matches the color of the photo itself, so it still looks pretty good. So these photos can also be sorted by the place where they come from, whether that's by USB, SD card, or in the local storage, or sent by someone's profile. As you can see there, it will be displayed down below. Doing a quick demo of what it looks like to send a photo over, so we can tap on files over here, and then let's tap on just photo. I can select this image and apply to send it. You can send up to nine images at the same time, and I'm also able to add a quick description as well, so I can say uh, mini PC, and then just click on send. It will take a few seconds, and afterwards it's basically going to be shared over to the server and then popped over onto the frame. So as you can see there, it's very fast. The internet connection of the Wi-Fi strength is also very good. Even if I was a little bit further away from the router, I was still able to get a pretty quick connection in terms of finding photos which were shared and uploaded. So not too much lag going on, which is great. And here we have the, again, image that has been just sent over. There are a few other applications here, of course, including the ability to set up quick alarms to perhaps wake you in the morning, but it's quite basic here. And other things include calendar as well, but uh, this is super simple. You aren't able to really set any reminders or notifications. It doesn't really sync, so it just shows you the time and date, as well as a random slideshow of the photo there. So another view basically as a passive way of looking at images and displaying something else as well. Uh, so going back here, the final widget is really the weather that you're able to see in your current region. What's the weather coming up for the next three days? Degrees in Celsius and Fahrenheit can be viewed, and that is pretty much it. There are no other pages or panels that you can really customize with. So I do wish that more of the digital photo frame manufacturers will also bring out maybe some slightly more advanced features. Uh, perhaps using it to view back, say, YouTube would also be a great application since it's more than enough to handle it, where a quick Google Assistant for searching could also just add to the utility. Still, overall, the functions presented here do work quite well. They're very simple. Kind of the final thing here is videos. So aside from uh, images, of course, you can also send video files over, also using their cloud servers. And you can see the kind of video just streaming along. Sending a video file, of course, will take a few seconds longer from your phone uh, compared to sending a photo, and you can only send one video at a time. Process is still simple enough. As long as the video is underneath around 5 GB, you should be okay. This frame does have an accelerometer, so it will automatically rotate its orientation. Flip a display like this, you can see the image will automatically rotate. So depending on the aspect ratio of your video or file, you can also interact with the frame like this. Kick can really only be positioned in this one angle. If you're trying to put it like this in the portrait, as you can see there, it's not going to be able to really stand upright. So maybe they can also design a kickstand in the future that would also work in this other orientation, and that would be even better. So that's more or less it as far as our quick review of this Dragon Touch Classic 15, a impressively large 15.6 inch digital photo frame really is just like a giant tablet. It really is quite immersive if you want something to display larger images with. The UI is super simple. The process of sharing photos to the frame is super easy. I like the fact that you can do it from anywhere. Any friend or family member you can approve and they can just share it over whether it's through their app or just directly emailing to the frame reliving your memories and sharing it with friends and family, especially these days where maybe traveling is difficult. So you can check out more details if you're interested in getting an extra large photo frame in the links below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.